Hey all, what's going on? Jordan Connect here with one of the final episodes of Embrace the Chase for the 2017 year. And I'm really excited because we're already on episode 45. And I feel like time is just flying by, but you guys are in for a real treat tonight because we have Ashley Graham. And for those of you who are not aware of her, you're going to love her story and you're going to love the message that she has behind her business, um, which is Brandesso. So basically, she specializes in social media, mar or social media, excuse me, uh, marketing, branding, website development and design, as well as some PR outreach. Uh, and working with the media. So for those of you that have questions on PR, she's your girl. Definitely make sure you reach out to to her. And by the way, um, she's incredibly, uh, I'm, I'm losing my adjectives here. She is uh, exactly who you are going to see she portrays herself as. She's not somebody different behind the camera. Um, she really is a sweet person. So if you ever have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to her. But uh, at the end of this live, for those of you watching live, I'm going to link a bunch of uh, her stuff below. So please go check it out, follow her, uh, and show her some love. But Ashley, is there anything else you'd like to add to that? No, I think you hit it right on top of the head. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I love it. So can you start us just kind of from the very beginning? Can you tell us your story of what led you to uh, becoming an entrepreneur and then eventually starting your company? Yeah, absolutely. So I have kind of an interesting and an extensive background. So I have always been a creative type. And so, you know, after college, I kind of took an interesting turn when it came to my career development and the positions that I wound up securing, you know, outside of college. So I went to school for fashion marketing and management, which is very interesting to kind of hear and understand, especially when I transitioned into more of a finance and real estate background. But one thing that I did in order to kind of cover, you know, two different grounds and two different bases is, you know, during my career, I realized that I needed some kind of a, of a creative outlet. So what I did was I had developed a blog that was live and up and running for about four years. And during that time, you know, it was really, you know, a good outlet to put my content development, my photography skills and kind of, you know, get me in the website and words, uh, WordPress space. And over a course of four years, four wonderful years, you know, I developed a lot of momentum. I was getting contacted from brands all over the world. I got contacted from companies in Canada, companies in Mexico, um, you know, a few over kind of like in Europe as well to do extensive coverage on their products and their services and talk about them in a little bit more in depth. And <clears throat> wonderful brands, it was a wonderful experience. And, you know, I started doing a lot of self-reflecting and a lot of self-development to be like, okay, so obviously this is where my passion lies. This is where I really want to transition. But being in completely different industries to where I wasn't able to use my, you know, my creativity the way that I could, you know, I noticed that there was a huge disconnect. So what I did, um, you know, I just, you know, had realized I'm like, okay, well, if you sit down and understand kind of the operations of, you know, brands and companies reaching out to me, you know, a lot of people are able to identify that with the agency space, you know, when you're working with multiple clients. So then I was like, you know what, I went to school and they told us that, you know, nine times out of 10, you know, the job that you're going to get outside of college tend to be in agency spaces. So I, you know, took a leap of faith. I actually up and quit the company that I was very well established in to go and kind of pursue the agency lifestyle to get a little bit more of an understanding of the kind of like corporate structure and just the, you know, the work environment, so to speak. Um, but before I did that, I did, you know, a lot more of the logistics behind Brando. So I came up with the name and, yeah, I think that's kind of like a good basis to kind of like start off of to how I transitioned into, you know, building Brandesso. <laughs> I love it. So, so just for clarification, when you left the corporate world and you said you went into the agency world, mm -hmm. you're specifically referring to you just started your own agency. You didn't work for someone else's agency for a bit? Well, so I did. Okay, so Brandesso was created before I went and actually worked in an actual agency here in San Diego. 
Okay. But Brandesso at that time was more of my side hustle. You know, nowadays a lot of people have that side hustle and that, yeah. you know, was mine. Um, but it was more on a smaller scale. It was little teeny tiny projects here and there. Um, you know, I was living behind that, uh, that door of fear. Um, it was, took me a really long time to actually kind of like step out of that and, you know, go for it, so to speak. I love it. So then can you kind of explain a little bit further to me? You told us, um, excuse me, you told me before we went live that Brandesso is kind of a hybrid between espresso and branding. <laughs> So what made you combine those two niches, which to me just seem polar opposite, but kind of make sense together? Yes, there's so many different avenues of where that name came about. But um, me being a creative person, I guess my mindset and the way that it works and, you know, as I envision and I think about where I want to go in my life, I am like, why follow the same steps that everyone else does? And so I'm like, branding, one of the biggest derivatives of what it stems off of is the name. And, you know, I could have gone into Ashley Graham Consulting. I could have gone into so many other, you know, names. But I'm like, you know what? Let's be different. Because my personality, I'm a little unorthodox. So I'm like, you know what, I want my business to be a good reflection of me, who I am and the values that I, you know, possess. So I am a coffee lover. I cannot start my day without coffee. Coffee is in my conversations probably all throughout the day. It's what everything that coffee possesses as far as like energizing, invigorating you that is what I want my brand. I want Brandesso to be bold, invigorating, expressive, and also bold and incorporate everything that, you know, coffee kind of, you know, means to some people. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I'm, I'm actually going to ask you a little bit harder of a question now. So <laughs> what is, do what? I said, keep them coming. All right. I love it. So, um, so there's a huge debate, at least from what I'm seeing in a lot of Facebook groups online. And that is what comes first, the business or the brand, like the personal brand. So obviously if you already have an established business, that's a different story. But for somebody out there right now who, who is thinking of becoming an entrepreneur, um, and it was something that you were actually talking about earlier, kind of the upbringing of becoming an entrepreneur, should they focus more right now on their personal brand or should they start a business and hustle that first before they try to brand anything or should they do both at the same time? Honestly, I think, you know, it's whatever they feel most comfortable with. I think, you know, most entrepreneurs or people who become business owners, you know, half the time they kind of do things backwards. You know, you have all these books, all these articles that say that you should follow steps one through five. But yes, that might work for some people, but that doesn't mean it's going to work and vibe with you. I think the more that, um, you know, you kind of immerse yourself into the business or the brand or whatever it is that you want to build, you, you know, you have that instinctual feeling of what it is that you need to do ultimately. So I think, you know, whatever route or path you think you should go, then, you know, go for it and then reevaluate it, set goals to kind of touch upon it maybe later on and reevaluate the situation to maybe go in a completely other step or other other direction. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So then what would you say is some of the worst advice you see in the industry that people get a lot? And, and you can think about it or answer that any way you want. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, there's one thing that came to my mind, but I'm like, I don't know if I really <laughs> want to get into that right now. Feel free. Feel free. Okay. So advice meaning... Kind of, I mean, like the average person that goes online and just says like, you know, hey, I'm looking for advice. I'm thinking of starting a personal brand or, hey, I've got a business. I'm trying to brand it in a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people who throw out their opinions that aren't really qualified. Is there anything that you just see immediately as like red flags? You know, you stumped me on that one. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, usually I'm not stump, stumpable, but you got me on that one. I'm like, huh, I'm going to have to think about that a while. You're good. You're good. Are you familiar with a gentleman named Marshall Gillen? I am not. So Marshall, he's a, a personal branding guy in Southern California and, and his opinion on that matter. So maybe we can go kind of off of this. He mentioned that he feels a lot of people um, kind of ignore using social media and they think that personal branding is entirely centered around networking. 
So do you think that um, that's the the same path that most people are kind of missing out on where they think that they just need to get their name out by not using social media or should they do both? I think you should do both. And I'm kind of glad that you brought that up because that's something, you know, over actually that's one of my potential projects. Um, I don't know if you want me to kind of go, go for it. Yeah. Talk about it. Um, well, so back in November, I actually la uh, launched a social group called Coffee and Commerce. And so it was more of a way to kind of put my networking to good use while also still focusing on social media, building kind of like a sub brand, still kind of working out, <laughs> still working out the little kinks. But sorry, I see the comments come up. That's so distracting. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. You're ignoring social media is a mistake. That's true. That's true. It is. I, I do believe that. Um, but anyway, so I guess to touch upon coffee and commerce a little bit is I am a social butterfly. I like to go out there and talk with people. And I like to network and work and collaborate uh, with people who bring value to the table, whether it's their entrepreneurs, whether they're painters, whether they're social media strategists people who are, you know, utilizing their creativity to the best of their ability. So um, I ultimately think kind of going on that a bit is networking and also having kind of a, an online presence, especially to where we are now socially. I think it's, um, it's highly encouraged and needed. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> So then let's kind of talk about going into 2018, since it's kind of something that's on everybody's minds right now. How can people um, get involved with your company right now? Um, like, do you do personal coaching or do you, or how do you, how can people work with you is really the question. Actually, that's a fantastic question. <laughs> so I am launching a podcast, uh, podcast. Come yeah. January. Yeah. So it's called the Brandista's Guide to Business Branding and Digital Marketing. And so our very first series is going to be on Instagram's new algorithms that they're pushing for 20, uh, 2018. So as a way to kind of launch it and being a very, you know, crucial time, um, that's, you know, something that's coming, you know, in the next few weeks. So, so oh, what is the new uh, Instagram algorithm? You'll just have to check out the podcast. All right. I'll do that. I'll do that because now I'm like, I'm hooked. I can't give the secrets out yet. I love it. I love it. So then for the rest of 2018, other than the podcast, um, kind of what other ideas are rolling around in your mind that you want to kind of get involved with? Um, you know, <laughs> excuse me. Um, right now, the the podcast is the biggest one. I'm currently fulfilling a content calendar to last throughout the entire year just because this is something that I'm very passionate about. And it's something that I've been wanting to do since I more or less kind of conceptualized um, with Brandesso back in 2016. So, you know, things kind of do take time to come into flourishing. And so, yeah, currently building out the content calendar, there should be some really good stuff. So I feel without putting, you know, a lot of stuff on my plate, that is going to be the biggest kind of like self promotion tool that we're going to be doing. Um, and, you know, it's predicted that we'll even have about two or three more clients starting in January, which is, you know, pretty huge after only being active and live for about six months. That's awesome. Wow, that's really cool. <laughs> So uh, let's pivot then. I'm gonna ask you a different question along the lines of mentorship. So who would you say are your biggest either mentors or what are your favorite books? Cause I know some people can't afford actual mentors. So they read a lot or they do both. Okay. So I don't know if this is um, correct to say on <laughs> a live podcast. Go for it. The current, the current book that I am reading that this captures, you know, my mindset and my personality and kind of where I'm going with the business to a T is the subtle art of not giving a, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I'm currently reading that book and it is, it's fantastic. The way that the writer, you know, talks about, you know, things that people are honestly a little afraid and uncomfortable to talk about. He puts it in a very constructive way that is relatable, no matter who you are, whatever your personality is. And the one thing, another thing that I appreciate about the book is it's not just from a business perspective of how to kind of utilize that way of thinking in your business, but it's a good way to utilize, you know, those methods in your personal life. 
because ultimately, you know, you have your personal life and you have your business, but ultimately it comes down to who you are and how, you know, the core values of what you, you know, bring to the table, whether it's your personal or your, your business. So I say that was a big one at the, at the moment. And then of course, you know, I owe everything to, you know, my wonderful support system with it, whether it's my friends and my family and just accountability partners. I feel that if you're going to be an entrepreneur and start your own business, those people are, are very crucial to have, you know, in your corner. So how did you actually end up meeting Layman? So he heard about coffee and commerce. <laughs> And he came to the launch party and yeah, he made the connection and I think it's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. His comment down there is like coffee and commerce for the win. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so, um, all right. So kind of a different question. So the main demographic for my podcast is about 25 to 35 and it's almost split. It's about 60% men and 40% uh, uh, women, but a lot of them um, kind of seem to be arguing about, their upbringing when it comes to education. Many people think that they've been lied to their entire lives, and this is not an education question by any means. But the actual question is, what advice would you give to somebody who is fresh into their career or is getting ready to come out of college that you wish you would have known when you were, I guess, at that age, like 18, 19, 20, before all that happened? Um, I'm glad that you bring this up because I have a wonderful intern um, on my team right now, Kathleen. She, you know, is still in college and, you know, she has been going through this program with me and I feel like I give her a lot of good advice or so she tells me, I'm like, I'm just talking, I'm conversating. I don't even put, you know, much thought into it. <laughs> but one thing that I do tell her is to, you know, take, like advantage of like really putting yourself out there. I think, you know, especially from my perspective, you know, with me always believing and thinking in that mindset of being an entrepreneur, I, you know, kind of took the scary way out. I went and found a full-time job and I feel that that's very common. You know, a lot of people don't really know or understand anything outside of that because it's so integrated in, you know, who we are, you know, as people. Um, but it's like, you know, if there's one thing, it's like, don't be afraid to get uncomfortable because I'm uncomfortable sitting here talking to you on the screen <laughs> and it's fantastic, you know? And so, you know, it's like, put yourself out there, send out those emails, try to get as many like internships or anything possible, like learn from people and yeah, just constantly put yourself out there and, you know, network, promote yourself. Self-promotion is, is very needed and encouraged. I love it. That's actually really, that's great advice. Yeah. Um, so I do want to respect your time though. So I'm going to ask the last question I ask every guest on the show uh, and feel free to take your time answering it. Um, but is there anything that's on your heart or on your mind right now that you want people to know about? And this can either be about you personally, a specific cause or really anything else. You know, the one thing that I had wrote down in my notes, <laughs> I had actually, um, you know, already kind of mentioned it. It was, you know, kind of how the book really speaks to me right now and kind of my goals and, you know, where I see myself going. Um, but also just, you know, your accountability partners, people who ultimately believe in who you are and who is not trying to overshine you. Um, yeah, that's something that I, I feel very passionate about, you know, process of elimination of who you want, like in your core circle is crucial because you need those people to really build you up and ultimately, like from their heart, they want to build you up and not, you know, actions speak louder than words. That's so true. Yeah. Ashley, thanks so much for being on. I really, really appreciate it. I'd love to have you on again in, you know, six, eight months and kind of hear how the podcast is going. Uh, for all of you watching live right now, thank you so much. I um, hope you guys have an awesome new year. But uh, as soon as this video ends, I'm going to link all of her stuff. Please go check her out. Please go follow her and don't hesitate to reach out to her. She really is who you see right here and she'd love nothing more than to answer your questions. I can promise you that. But Ashley, is there anything else you'd like to say before uh, we kick this off? Um, just a thank you to everyone out there watching. That means the world to me. <laughs> and true, thank true. you for the opportunity again. I've said it probably <laughs> 10 times already. <laughs> Of course, no, thank you so much for being on. Really, really yeah. appreciate it. But um, you guys all have a fantastic evening and um, enjoy the new year and we will see you guys later.
Bye.